same-sex couples should be able to get married. Right now, Obama says, I do, to same-sex marriage. What catapulted him towards this maybe historic decision, and how will it affect his campaign? We'll break it all down. And next, Hurricane Espada is going to turn this place upside down. Well, karma is a funny thing, isn't it? Ku karma. Remember these three? Three of the four amigos who brought the New York State Legislature to a standstill that ugly summer? Well, you know what they say about karma. Two of the amigos headed to prison while the fate of the third in the hands of a jury we will discuss. And later? There is an expectation that you need to make this world a better place. Teaching tolerance. We're going to bring you the amazing story of one woman who was just honored for going the extra mile to teach her students about tolerance, civility, and humanity, and as we say, it runs in the family. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to RFL. I am Richard French, and thank you so much for joining us this Thursday evening, May 10th. Now, the story on everybody's minds today still is the president's endorsement of same-sex marriage. So tonight, we're going to break it down for you in depth. First, we will have the president's surprising into some stunning words, as well as the significance of them on what many people are saying, I think fairly so, is a groundbreaking move here. Then we will have the reaction, and from all sides, including opponents to it, and then we will discuss the political impact. Yes, it is an election year. What does this mean for Obama's campaign? And finally, we will get into the timeline. How did we get to where we are today, and what has really pushed Obama to where he is now, even on his personal evolution on this issue? All right, we're in first position, everybody, with Obama's moving and surprising endorsement. I've been going through an evolution on this issue. And I had hesitated on gay marriage, uh, in part because I thought civil unions would be sufficient. But I have to tell you that over the course of several years, as I talk to friends and family and neighbors, uh, when I think about uh, members of my own staff who are in incredibly committed monogamous relationships, same-sex relationships, who are raising kids together. At a certain point, I've just concluded that um, for me personally, it is important for me to go ahead and affirm that uh, I think same-sex couples should be able to get married. And I continue to believe that this is an issue that is going to be worked out at the local level. You know, when we think about our faith, the thing at, at root that we think about is not only uh, Christ sacrificing himself on our behalf, uh, but it's also the golden rule. I figure the more consistent I can be uh, in being true uh, to, to those precepts, uh, the better I'll be as a dad and a husband, and uh, hopefully the better I'll be as a president. All right, there the president, in his own words, talking about how he got to where he got this week on the issue. So to discuss this, let's bring in our table here. Not just the significant significance of the moment, but so much more. Dominic Carter, of course, political journalist and author. Richard Brodsky, former assemblyman and now senior fellow at Demos, Demos, and as well a professor at NYU, and our senior political correspondent, Andrew Whitman. And another member of the panel is you at home. And what we've done this week, and we'll continue tonight, and even expand upon it, is give you a platform to make your opinion heard. And as I said, we're going to attack this from a lot of different issues not just what the president said, how we got here, but if I told you where we were 10 years ago, and we will tonight, where in literally a Vermont capital, a governor at the time making sure no still photographers or nobody with a video camera was there for him to sign in a civil union, and the backlash he got in a blue, blue state here, imagine where we were from then to where we are now and where we may soon be in the future on this issue here. Uh, we're going to get into all that, and as I said, you're a part of it. So get on the toll-free phone lines now. Tell us if you agree or disagree with the president and why, and I'd love to hear some personal issues. You see the toll-free number right there at the bottom of the screen. We'll also be uh, hearing from you via social media as well. We'll read some of your tweets and your Facebook comments. But um, we'll get to those reaction in just a little bit. First, though, let's break down and let's start with the significance of what the president's endorsement can be, and I don't think it can be underestimated. President, the first U.S. president, as we know, to endorse same-sex marriage. But was he just flowing along with the public in just the past few decades? Attitudes and opinions about same-sex marriage, they have changed, and as I said, changed dramatically. Just look at how the polls have pivoted. Look at 1996, not that long ago. 
you had little over a quarter of the American population supporting the concept of legalizing same-sex marriage. Today, the number doubled, where 50%, and in some polls even more than that, saying they do support the concept. And who can forget, like I said, in 2000, only 12 years ago, Howard Dean, forget the presidential candidate, the then governor of Vermont, chose to sign the U.S.'s first civil unions bill in secret because the idea is so controversial and groundbreaking here, he never wanted to be saddled with that permanent etched image of him signing a document that would allow a same-sex couple to have a civil union. Not a marriage, but a civil union with some of the legal protections that come attached. Okay, 12 years ago, still the 21st century, and now we fast forward to today. Six states plus the District of Columbia, they allow same-sex marriages. Three other states, they've just passed freedom to marry bills that have yet to take effect. Nine states allow broad domestic partnerships or civil unions, and four allow for more limited domestic partnerships. 42% of the population now lives in a state which provides some form of protection for gay couples here. And from a significant standpoint, we can debate the politics and a little bit of it, but to me, Dominic, um, if you just look at how fast America has come, it is pretty amazing. I mean, look at race and still the fight that we had to have in this country over civil rights and how long that took to have just the basic premise of some form of equality for voting, access, etc. This issue was inconceivable 12, 15 years ago that we'd have many states that would allow people to marry and a president, a sitting president saying yes. Two men, two women should be treated the same as one man, one woman when it comes to being able to say, I do. Well, let's keep in mind he did stop short of federal enforcement of this issue. Yep. But it is, as you pointed out, Richard, a major, major step, the first time a U.S. president has done it. He deserves major credit for it. It plays well to the to the to his supporters in the gay community, uh, those that feel that this is the last frontier, if you will, in the battle for civil rights. But I don't want to underestimate it is a very risky move. And we'll talk about the political exposure that it may have. Andrew, though, if you look at it through the prism of history, it is pretty significant, not just his words here, but how little pushback and we'll get to the politics, even from the Republican presidential candidate, the Speaker of the House. There's been some who have attacked it, obviously, the usual suspects. But a lot of folks who would have had huge issues with this on principle or politics just a few years ago, either you can give them the benefit of the doubt and say they took the high road or they said, you know what? This issue, it's happening. There's an inevitability to this. We're not going to jump up and down. It's ironic because we're still we're getting a, a break like this at the same time that you have, you know, a couple of days after North Carolina passes a constitutional amendment outlawing same-sex marriage. But the speed with which this this support has increased in this country is remarkable, and I think a lot of people are trying to stay out of harm's way in in opposing it or not vocally opposing it. Look back, what was it, 1996, when Ellen DeGeneres yeah. had a kissed another woman and came out on, on television. And there was such a hubbub about that. There was so much controversy about whether that should even be allowed. And, now we have people getting and married. And, Rich, I'm going to bring your colleague in from Albany in a minute, uh, State Senator Tom Dwayne, who you know well. But put yourself in Albany. When you were there, the issue came up, but Albany wasn't ready for it. America well, was, or at least New York wasn't the, ready for it. And then, as we saw recently, New York became one of uh, assembly, now more than a handful the of The assembly states. was ready for it. We, I had the privilege of start leading off the debate the first time it uh, passed the, uh, the state assembly. And you saw the, the nature of the conflict. It was not just uh, political. It was, in some sense, deeply religious. And I, I think that... The, the, generational, what, too, right? Oh, clearly generational, but also although the parties were roughly divided, not entirely. The, the, a lot of it was based upon personal experience. Two of the Republican assembly members who voted for the bill had family members who were gay. So the, 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 you saw the complicated mm -hmm. nature of this. I think what's important to recognize is nothing the president has said is requiring people who really don't agree with this for whatever reason, religious, right. to do anything they don't want to do. No church is going to be compelled uh, to, to marry gay people if it violates their, their religious precepts. This it's is just a one question of personal the, opinion, of but the yet law 
and how the law applies to individual Americans. I think it's long overdue, and I, and I congratulate the president. Well, let's get another perspective right now. And joining us live from New York City, New York State Senator Tom Duane. Senator Duane, the state's first openly gay, openly HIV-positive member when he was elected. And, Senator, I really appreciate a few minutes. And when you heard the president say the words, and I've spoken to some folks who said uh, they'll never forget where they were, do you attach that amount of significance to a president saying that he, too, supports the idea of same-sex marriage? Absolutely. It was thrilling. It was just an amazing, momentous occasion for the president of the United States to say that he supports same-sex civil marriage. I cannot really explain how gigantic that is. It is uh, really not just going to change the United States, but it's going to change the world. You know, I had an interesting conversation um, with a professional a friend of mine who said, you know, I still have awkward conversations with my father um, since I came out, and he has children now um, and a partner. And he moved to New York in no small part because he wants to now be able to get married. He said, but the president saying that I'm the same, too, it's going to make that conversation with my father easier. Do you understand what he's talking about? Absolutely. And, and when the president said that he was evolving on this issue, I absolutely understood that as well. My parents had to evolve on this issue. And uh, I don't think we can underestimate uh, the, impact, the impact that uh, Barack Obama, the president's children, and his wife had on this issue. I believe they discussed this as a family. And uh, the president said that he wanted to find a way to make sure that all families could be equal. And I believe that they agreed as a family that the only way that they could make all families equal was to make marriage available to everybody. You know, Senator, the same week that the president uh, stated uh, his position on this. State of North Carolina, the same state that will host the Democratic Convention, um, has now a constitutional amendment uh, banning same-sex marriage uh, or redefining it as only man and a woman. Are you comfortable that this is still a state-by-state -state issue? Would you have liked the president to go even further and say that he's going to use the power of his office to make this the law of the land? Well, the North uh, Carolina situation is really an aberration. Remember, what was happening there was they were having a Republican primary. So it was only Republicans who turned out to vote. And uh, if you look at the polling in that state, it's much closer to 50-50. And of course, the president now coming out in favor of same-sex civil marriage for all of the different constituencies that are important to the president winning this election, I believe that his support is going to be very, very helpful in moving hearts and minds and really moving a lot more people into the Democratic column as well as into the, uh, the column that says, yes, let's treat all families exactly the same way. Um, that same conversation I had earlier today, uh, you know, he said, you know, it's a shame. Um, I know a lot of people who didn't make it to today um, that would have would have loved to have been around uh, to hear somebody who sits in the most important chair in America saying uh, that we're the same, um, whether you're straight or gay. You must feel the same way, I assume. I do, and I truly believe that we have lived during the uh, the worst of times and the best of times. I was alive uh, for Stonewall. I was a, a teenager living in New York City, so I was aware of what happened there. Uh, I came out at an early age, 17, 18 years old. And when I say come out, I mean I came out politically. I announced to the world. I wrote letters to newspapers. I came out on my university campus. I mean, I really came out. And I would never have thought then that marriage would be a possibility. I, it was beyond anyone's imagination. So we went from Stonewall to the beginning of the LGBT civil rights movement to the terrible uh, AIDS crisis, which, by the way, of course, continues today, to now the president of the United States supporting marriage, and state after state recognizing 
marriage. And it's been done legislatively, it's been done through the courts, it's been done in every possible way. And the momentum is for more and more of uh, uh, states in our union recognizing and enshrining in law same-sex civil marriage. Of course it's going to be more difficult in southern sta states and red states. Of course it's going to be that way. But the, the, the march of civil rights on this issue is moving forward. And for the President of the United States, for who he is and the historic figure that President Obama is, to come out and say this is just, I, you cannot underestimate the power of what has just happened. Do you give the president credit that this was politically courageous, or do you think that uh, he, his hand was forced because Biden opened his mouth, or that they did their internal polling and said this will get him more votes than it will cost him? You know, this is an issue where you never really know which way it's going to cut. This is an issue that comes from someone's heart, from their gut, from their mind, from their soul. This is not an issue that you could ever really get a position from a poll on. This is something that comes from the heart. And uh, that's why I think this is so very important. Is it risky? Yes, it is risky because who knows how it's going to turn out. But this is what he believes. And if he said anything differently, people would see through it. And I think people, when they hear a politician, an elected official speak truthfully, they know it. And the sincerity, uh, the, the, just the emotion that the president put behind this announcement, I think Americans will see just how important it is. And they'll say, you know what? President Barack Obama has come to this decision with his heart, his mind, his soul, in consultation with his family and his friends. And you know what? Maybe we should consider it. So uh, I, I don't think you could. Everything is political. Everything is political. But this kind of decision is not a decision you can make on politics. And uh, it's really a heart and a mind and a soul uh, position to take. And I think that's what makes this so very important. Last question, Senator. Uh, we're going to be opening up our phone lines uh, in a moment, and we'll be getting some reaction online. Inevitably, somebody's going to say, hey, you know what? Tom Dwayne ought to just be happy with a civil union. Marriage should be a man and a woman. Why does that institution have to be extended to two men or two women? What would you say to that person? Well, marriage is something that everyone understands, and marriage is something that means family. And so for couples and children and uh, extended families, marriage is marriage. Civil unions not equal to marriage. That's why marriage is so important. It means full equality. It means that everybody is treated the same way, same dignity, same rights, same responsibilities. That's the American way. That's why marriage is so very important. Senator Tom Duane, I really appreciate a few minutes. Thank you so much. Thank you. States uh, are able to make decisions with regards to domestic partnership benefits, uh, such as uh, hospital visitation rights, uh, benefits and so forth of various kinds could be determined state by state. But my view is that marriage itself is a relationship between a man and a woman, and, uh, and that's, uh, that's my own preference. I know other people have differing views. This is a very uh, tender and sensitive topic, as are many social issues. Uh, but I, uh, I have the same view that I've had uh, since, uh, well, th th since running for office. Uh, I believe that uh, marriage is the union of one man and one woman. And uh, the president and the Democrats can talk about all this all they want. Uh, but the fact is, the American people are focused on our economy and they're asking a the question, where are the jobs? So you don't think it's a civil rights issue at all? I uh, noticed Boehner ignored that last question about civil rights. But what's clear from the reaction from the GOP is that they are not going on the full-out attack on this. And uh, you surprised, Dominic? Not at all. They don't have a public opinion on their side. A majority of Americans well, their support... their base certainly is. Well, their base, but a ma their base can't deliver the White House. You have to get a majority of the vote and, and those crucial independents. Uh, imagine, imagine what the right would be doing if they were still in primary season. Can you imagine if Santorum and Gingrich were still in the presidential race? They would be racing themselves to bash gay marriage faster than the other ones. But Obama's going to flush Romney out on this. Make no mistake well, about let it. Let me give you a, a headline. Andrew, in fact, 
pointed this one out to me. This came out early, and if we could bring this up, this is from the Washington Post here, a story that, trust me, if you haven't heard it, I'll give you the beginning of it, and you're going to hear much more on it. This apparently was Romney um, in the teenage years. Uh, and again, I'm reading verbatim here from the Post. Um, this, Andrew, as I assume, was in the latter part of high school, right? Yeah, this was uh, 16, 17 in his private high school outside of Detroit. Uh, the, the nuts and bolts of it is basically that, that Romney and a group of other people apparently picked on and bullied a couple of gay students. There was one gay student who said uh, that they used to call out, and, and as he was talking in class, his reaction would be, hey, girl. Uh, to but apparently as, got to the physical point where he pinned the kid down pinned the kid because, because he didn't because like he had, how his hair was cut, right? Right, because he dyed his hair blonde, and the group pinned him down, and Romney apparently took scissors to the guy's hair and cut his hair, and the guy passed away, I think, about seven years ago, but you know the sources in in the in the article who are close to Romney said I bumped into the guy at some point before he died and he was still disturbed by it this is as an adult and again that was in the Washington Post here um, Richard I'm reading some of the um, conservative uh, positioning on this and uh, it's more tepid than I thought they certainly got a problem no with it. one knows what the political how this will spin out this is a wild card that could turn out to hurt Obama or help him uh, it, with his base, it certainly brought people back. Yeah. People who were for the audacity of hope were then hoping for some audacity in this go around. They got it. This was audacious. Yeah. Um, but whether voters reflect the poll numbers or another question. Well, let me, get, let me bring in some of the voters, but also I've been asking folks at home what they think, and, and I'll start off with Penny. She's calling us from Queens. Penny, what was your reaction when you heard the president say that he, in fact, supports same-sex marriage? Go ahead, Penny, you're on the line. All right, we're going to move on uh, to uh, Valerie. Valerie is calling us from Philadelphia. Valerie, go ahead. Uh, first caller here, your reaction to the president. My reaction was, I think it's right. No one has the, uh, the right to make a decision for anyone else. These are uh, consulting adults and consenting adults. And, you know, if we focused more on what we need as a, a country, then we wouldn't be so in, indulgent in other people's private affairs. Thank you. Let's see what Carol Ann has to say. She's calling us from Reading. Uh, Carol Ann, you didn't like um, the, the president weighing in like he did this week. Is that right? No, absolutely not. I um, disagree with the idea that there can even be such a thing as gay marriage. I think it's important to distinguish between civil union versus gay marriage. Civil union is a legal contract, and we can create legal contracts with any persons that, with whom we choose to create those contracts. Some of the advantages of legal, uh, pardon me, of civil unions include, of course, allowing people to choose who visits you in the hospital. Yeah, but Carol, can, uh, Carol, with, can I ask you a question, though? Why do you care? Uh, why? I'm a married guy. Um, my wife and I, we got three kids. To me, whether my neighbor's gay or not, it's not going to change my life. Why do you care or the, or if two men or two women decide they want to get married and do the nuclear household kind of thing? Why is that threatening? It's a good question. I can't say 100% that it's threatening. That's what you said, right? Yes. Yeah. I can't say that it's threatening per se, but I think it does. The concept of gay marriage, I think, undermines the, um, the very unit of the family structure in the first place. But I don't think that's the same as saying it, it's threatened. I understand. I understand. Carolina, thank you for your phone call. We agree to disagree on that one. I never necessarily bought that argument, but... It, it, what I saw play out this year in Albany uh, was really fascinating to me. And one of the guys who I thought took a pretty principled stand was Jim Alessi, Republican from upstate, um, who over a lot of political possible consequences was one of the yay votes, because um, he had Democrats that voted against this. He was one of the votes to put it over the top. He now has announced that he's not going to run again. Um, and the logic, at least to me, was a little bit interesting because he didn't want to cost the GOP a seat. There's a lot more to that candidacy than gay marriage. He had sued the city for it. It, it was complicated. 
the, in the end, the Republican Party is firmly anchored with its Tea Party base and its social conservatives in ways that make it very difficult for Republicans to do anything but either oppose gay marriage or sort of try to hide. Th that, you know, that is just the reality yeah. of, of the Republican Party today. But the, 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 the fascinating part is this, the last caller, I mean, when you say, are you threatened by it, that is the argument that says the people who are against this, there's something wrong, they're afraid. I think what she's saying, and I think what reflects in these polls, is there's something awkward and new about a traditional concept being manipulated and changed by the government. I've had a lot of people tell me that, uh, you know, uh, I got kids in parochial school, so I, we have the religious aspect yeah. that comes into it. And a lot of people, good people, will say, I have a problem with it because it undermines the institution. Um, and while I can respect different opinions, I've never got that only because the same week in North Carolina, I'm not trying to be flip here, that they decide that they're going to have an amendment to ban, uh, to prohibit two men or two women from getting married. You got Edwards in a courtroom who, who did tra trash Richard. is putting politely the institution of marriage what? with what he did with some photographer on the campaign trail. So. With all due respect, uh, you know, that, that's the easy, no, unfortunate not, comparison though. to make. People worry too much about what other people the are doing. The important thing to, to, for people who have a concern about this is if you don't like it, don't get married. Don't do it. The real issue is can a majority or even a minority to say to other groups that are smaller, you don't have access to the same legal system we have access to. It's very but similar to the abortion how much evidence issue. do we need? It's a very, very brave move uh, to make, and, and we're, we're extremely grateful. Yeah, we realize what a, um, a politically risky uh, position he's putting himself in. A man is supposed to be with a woman, and a woman is supposed to be with a man. That's how I feel, and, I'm, and that's never going to change. And today, history bent a little further toward justice. Well, I was disappointed. I'd open my Bible and show him where the Bible says that marriage is between a man and a woman. It shows that he is a wonderful leader to, you know, come out and say that he supports it. I believe it really was a political calculation. I'm totally against it. It's not right. It's against my religious beliefs. It's against what I grew up believing. I don't know that the gay community is a swing vote. I don't know there's enough of us that we can actually help a president win an election. All right, and that leads us to reaction, just a sampling of some of the conversations they've been having in dining rooms, living rooms, water coolers, and now a president sitting in front of a camera and sharing his own quote-unquote evolution on the issue. Andrew, you wanted to say something right before we uh, went to break. Well, we were just talking about why there was so much objection to, to gay marriage, and, and I mean, to me, I, I think it's the fact that it regularizes a gay lifestyle for the people who are opposed What's to it. What's a gay it's, lifestyle? It, it, it's gay people living their lives together, Richard. But it, 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 they, but they live differently than straight people? No, they don't, but I'm saying the perception of the people who have a problem with it, whether they're homophobic or religious, or frankly, I think some, there are some people who are uncomfortable about their own feelings when it comes to their sexuality. And, and people have a, this gut reaction to it, saying, no, no, keep it away from me. And that's, gay marriage is just another step in regularizing it and making it acceptable you know, in, I as far as they're concerned. And I think, I think what Andrew's talking about, everybody has heard whether it's an uncle saying, I'm okay as long as I don't see him holding hands, or as long as I see him kissing in public, or uh, I'm okay, but I just don't, they don't need to get married. They, they, they. And I think this is generational. And, and one thing I took from that little clip we played, Dominic, is I saw a couple, um, I saw a black pastor, um, and I know from polling in the black community, this is a divisive issue here. And, Extremely divisive. Uh, I know Obama uh, certainly isn't going to lose the black vote well, here, but gonna, this doesn't play well necessarily it, in the pews on Sunday. The good news for Obama is that even though a sizable amount of African Americans do not support gay marriage, they're not going to stay home or vote against him. The bad news for Obama in these critical swing states, I guarantee you tonight, this position that he's taken, while it's bold, he can kiss North Carolina goodbye. That's gone. And it's a question of the other swing states. And so he took a very bold 
the, he made a bold, risky decision. Why he did it now, I'll never understand because, frankly, I would have waited until after the election. I did, well, I, I think I Biden did, forced I, his hand. I mean, we're well, going to talk about not, that I, I still would have waited yeah. until after I, the election. I, I, I disagree that you can kiss North Carolina goodbye, by the North way. I don't, I don't think gone. this is an issue that, that determines that people pull the lever based on. Well, I, I this think, is going to energize the opposition vote. Well, how, not, about, not, not how about the youth vote? I mean, we know, Andrew, we all covered it. We all, no, we, we covered, I don't buy that. I remember four years ago, something I'd never seen covering elections, which was kids in huge numbers, not just the dedicated, but it was the cool thing to do to work on the campaign. Well, Richard, whether you were New Hampshire, whether you were, what, wherever you were, they were knocking on doors, they were giving small donations, they were do working the phone Richard, banks. Do you think they're energized tonight? Well, I think it returns this question of the audacity of hope back is something that Obama possesses. He did something audacious. It reminds people of what they liked, even if they don't like the outcome. You know, it reminded me, he's actually done a lot um, as it relates to gays that I never, I mean, I knew it, but I didn't process. I'm like, wait a minute, don't ask, don't tell. That stopped on his watch. Um, but you it's know, not I, just about gay issues. He's no, reminding I'm people on this issue. It's like that, symptomatic but, of so many I things. He what, does, he's done more than If this has a good think. political effect for him, it's because it reminds people of what they liked about his persona, There's not that. what but they Richard, liked about his policies. But, but what about those conservative, frankly, white Democrats and swing states that are on the fence to begin with about Obama because of the economy? Or the independent voters, right? Or the independent voters. Th that's, the, that's the other side of the risk. And I'm telling you, I don't care what you poll. I don't care what focus groups you do. This is uh, uncharted territory, right. and we won't know for Real months. Real quick, let me take a, I hope I'm saying this right, Mamie from Delaware. Mamie, you're on the line. I say it's about time. I've been waiting for this for 62 years. I have known more gay couples that are monogamous than I have heterosexual couples. Most heterosexual couples I have known have had many, many partners both before and after the so-called marriage. But uh, I say hooray for the president who will get my vote next election. And uh, I'm, I'm really looking forward to marrying a woman myself. Maybe thank you for your phone call. I had already made a decision that we were going to probably take this position before the, uh, before the election and before the convention. Um, he probably got out a little bit uh, over his skis, uh, but out of generosity of spirit. Would I have uh, uh, preferred to have, have, have done this uh, in my own way, uh, in my own terms, without, I think, there being a lot of notice to everybody? Sure, but uh, all's well that ends well. You know, when I was watching that clip, Andrew, I'm looking to my right, and I'm thinking, I mean, Brodsky already thinks he's president. Do you imagine if yeah. Brodsky's president and all of a sudden his VP goes out on Sunday and says, yeah, yeah, I think we ought to do this. If you read the Times account of what happened in the Oval Office, they were ready to strangle him. Because now it looks like Obama's reacting to what he did. I think the reaction is, it's that that's a third story today, not the first one like it was a couple of days ago, but nonetheless... Uh, There's a place for discipline. There's oh, yes, exactly. Oh, uh, the belt would have come Could've out been of like, that. Why haven't you done this sooner? Yes. Oh, God. Uh, let's, um, let me uh, hear what Barbara's got to say. She's calling us from Long Island. Barbara, uh, same question um, that I've been asking the other callers. What do you think? I think that um, I will vote for Obama uh, coming up. I am a gay woman who just was married last year when New York made it legal. And I feel that just like you have all the... The, the bully, uh, the teenagers dying because they can't, people are calling them different names, and everybody comes out with, oh, they're so sorry, this and that. But then when you turn around and you want to give everyone in the United States of America the same rights, everybody get blown out of proportion. They come bringing the Bible out. They are talking about their beliefs. But why are you worrying about what's happening in someone else's home? I'm not worried about what's happening in your home unless there is key or, or underage children um, who's being affected with someone like it. But knowing the society, we're going to blame everything on the gays because the gays are getting married. I will not move to North Carolina, which I was thinking about <laughs> doing, but now I will not move to North Carolina since they have a ban on gay rights. Why should I move from New York where it has the rights to move to North Carolina? That's my opinion, and more power to the president. I will vote for him. All right, Barbara. Congratulations, Barbara. Yes. Congratulations. Yes. And um, 
I saw something, um, uh, Charles Blow, who you guys uh, know, um, writes an interesting column sometimes with numbers, but today with words here. Um, and this is what uh, he had to say, quote, today we are an inch taller as a nation. Today we're a mile closer to the ideals described by the Declaration of Independence. Today we've been transported light years beyond where many ever thought we would be. Some have argued that the president should have delayed any movement on this issue till after the election so as to not provide Republicans with a wedge issue. I strongly disagree with this position. There is no wrong time to do the right thing. And one. for the alternative perspective, we go to the Family Research Council, a very influential conservative group, and this is from Tony Perkins, who's the president. Romney, who has signed a pledge to support a marriage protection amendment to the U.S. Constitution, may have been handed the key to social conservative support by President Obama. And uh, I think it depends where you sit tonight, whether it's a, uh, coming from a personal issue, coming from uh, wherever your background is. If there were skittish social conservatives on Romney, they have more of a reason to vote for him. But for those people who feel disappointed in the last three years that the audacity of hope wasn't achieved, they got at least a small piece of what they thought they were getting when they voted uh, for the first African-American president in this country. So I, I think it's, it's all in the eye of the beholder. I think it is. Um, I don't think Mitt, Mitt Romney needed a key to social conservatives. I don't think they were on the fence. They, if, if those were the issues that mattered to them, they were lost to Obama. If there are people sort of caught in the middle, uh, the white, uh, uh, blue-collar Ohio, Pennsylvania voters, that may be where this pops up, one way or another. And again, if the numbers shift, Romney may support it. <laughs> but, but the bottom line is, is this going to energize more the opposition or the base? Yeah. And that's the dilemma for yep. the president. And I think those will be the interesting poll numbers we get on those swing states we were talking about, Dominic, in the coming days. <laughs> All right, let's uh, bring uh, the back the, the callers here. Uh, let's start off with Raymond Collins from Poughkeepsie. Uh, Raymond, what would you think of what the president had to say? Well, first of all, I think it's it, this is really outrageous. I mean, this is crazy. This is the main reason why this country is in the position it's in right now. We are no longer number one, and this is one of the main reasons why. And then when your health care goes up sky high because we're allowing anything to go on, then we'll, then everybody's going to complain about that. How are we not number one, Raymond? Excuse me? How are we not number one? You said we're not number one anymore. How exactly? How are you measuring that? China's outdoing us, and everybody, all these other countries are outdoing us. And somehow gay marriage is behind that? Gay marriage led to well, China I, taking our, our economic gains, our outsourcing jobs? Exactly. Okay. Exactly. All right. Because it's going to cost all the taxpayers money to fund all these crazy things they're going to want to do with health care and everything else. Hey, Raymond, you know what? We can agree to disagree, but I'm just no, just I'm on sorry. the fact that front. It, that just no. doesn't make any sense. Right on the fact front, this is not an economic issue. This is not going to bankrupt anybody. I can argue that states who've done this have had more money in their state coffers with tax receipts. If you're if you're married, you pay more in taxes than if you were two separate uh, guys just living together here. He's so just trying to hoist the problem. Every problem that the country faces on one issue. All right. It's um, Listen, uh, this debate will never get unanimity here, and that's okay. We want to have debate from both sides. Welcome back. The month of May is National Jewish American Heritage Month. It's time to pay tribute to the generations of Jewish Americans who've helped form the fabric of both our culture and society. So tonight, in that same spirit, we're going to highlight the efforts of one woman, a longtime social studies teacher who goes the extra mile to teach tolerance, civility, and, yes, humanity. She was recently honored by the Holocaust and Human Rights Education Center, and she sat down with our reporter, Kim Lengel, who has a really uplifting story. Yes, it is. Well, 42-year-old middle school teacher Erin Filner comes from a long line of people who have taken a strong stand against racism and intolerance. Her grandfather helped liberate a concentration camp in Germany, and her father protested segregation during the Freedom Rides in Mississippi. Erin admits growing up in the Filner family had a long generation of human rights activists. It left big shoes to fill, but her recent award proves her message is reaching many. There was an expectation that you need to make this world a better place. And my grandfather very clearly said, you know, racism is evil, and not only you, your whole generation has a responsibility to leave this world better. With that directive always in mind, 
Erin says even as a child, she knew she wanted to be a teacher, but never thought it could be so rewarding. Erin says she cried tears of joy when she found out that she received this award for her outstanding leadership in fighting bigotry and hatred. She says her grandfather's dream has now been realized. My grandfather was uh, the son of Polish immigrants, and when Adolf Hitler came to power, he was beyond draft age, but he knew that he had to do something. And so he enlisted in the army, and he left two-year-old son and his wife, and went off to war. His two-year-old son, Bob, would grow up to become a California congressman only after joining the Freedom Riders in 1961. It was a group of white and black civil rights activists who rode interstate buses into the South to denounce the separate but equal philosophy of the time. This is Bob Filner's mugshot. At the age of 18, he was arrested and spent 60 days in jail for his protest of segregation. Erin says her father was guided by his father's incredible desire to promote a sense of justice. So in 1945, when the Allied forces, ready to liberate the concentration camps in Germany, put out a call for Yiddish-speaking soldiers to help with prisoners, Erin's grandfather proudly answered. Because my grandfather spoke Yiddish, he was transferred from Africa to Germany. And so he was one of, he was a captain in the regiment that liberated Dachau concentration camp. When Aaron's grandfather passed away in 2000, she made the pilgrimage to Dachau and walked where he walked as he liberated thousands of prisoners. She calls it an extraordinarily powerful experience. To know what he, how, how that changed him, I mean, for every liberator, I mean, in addition to the survivors and the victims, it, it changed their lives and their souls forever. And so to know that that was what shaped him and then to stand on that ground, especially as a historian, it was just awesome. Erin says she tr strives to inspire a love of history and love of humanity in every student she teaches. She says she tells her students daily, racism is evil and you have to do something. Words of wisdom she learned from her grandfather. The Susan J. Goldberg Memorial Teacher Award was presented to Filner as part of the annual Holocaust Commemoration at Iona College in New Rochelle. Rich. You did a lot of great work with mm -hmm. those kids. Kim, thank you very much.